this. I just scanned the computer after this car is. Then I was coming off a stop sign and it wouldn't accelerate. Just coming up to another stop sign here. Trying to make it home. Creeping this thing home. Won't let me shift in the manual or anything. It stays, I think it's in third. Second and third. It's as high as it goes. It won't move. Over time leading up to this, what was happening is I was getting the uh, stability track light coming on and off. Uh, the car was running rough when it when it would come on. Uh, so I, I finally uh, had enough on the way home here from work and just wouldn't wouldn't shift gears right. I was coming off a stop sign, go go forward straight, and it wouldn't shift gears right. And I just ended up pulling over and I broke out the code reader and it gave me a code uh, P0700 and P071 I'm pretty sure it was okay this is it this is what it's doing that noise is probably the road the road is rough here excavators or something all right we're gonna turn this corner it's not gonna shift but this is the this is the symptoms I thought I'd get it on recording because I'm gonna fix it I'm trying to creep this thing home all right I don't want to rev it up too much says I read the codes I brought up the codes and it said something about the TCM transmission control module that could be a possibility because I started to notice that the uh, oil leak that I'm having uh, got a little bit worse I'm starting to get worse so what I'm gonna do as soon as I can is uh, change out the gasket on the oil cooler on the side of the block and while I'm down there, I'm gonna make sure I look at the TCM transmission control module, make sure it hasn't been uh, saturated with oil or anything like that. Cause I know that's gonna short circuit it. Uh, I'll try and clean everything up as much as I can. If it's the transmission, it's the transmission. And I'm talking to a guy right now who's got a transmission he, he can have for sale. All right, but this is it. This is what's been going on. I got code P0700 and P071. All right. Okay, here we are. We made it home. All right. Back home. I've been doing some research on YouTube. Find out where the traction control module is on this. And on regular GMs, it's right here. Okay, right by the ECM on the back. There's even clips on here for it. But obviously, I mean, it's not there. Uh, I looked online at Rock Auto for a EC, or uh, sorry, TCM. And, and by the looks of it, I seen some uh, videos and they said, and they said that it is located inside of the transmission. So I'm gonna check that oil leak I was talking about. All right, we have this product right here. Okay, it's an endoscope. I got this on Amazon for $50. I'm gonna test it out.
Okay, guys, here we go. Transmission replacement. I was able to find a transmission around here. The guy said he's got a 35K rebuild on it for 1300 Okay. I was getting those torque converter readings. Okay. So it says it's a rebuild. All right. There it is. All right. I'm in the middle of taking everything off. I got the transfer case off. There it is over there. All right. Just right now, I'm just getting rid of all these small connections, like the shift linkage right there. All right. Had to get the exhaust manifolds off. These bolts, these exhaust bolts are kind of an issue because if your car is old and you're and you have winters where they put salt on the roads uh you're gonna have an issue with the rust so one thing i found that worked i'll show you right now these right here all right first i had a 14 on there Okay, where is it? All right, right there. So first I had a 14, I tried that. Or no, actually, sorry. First I put this 16 on because they're originally 15 mils from what I seen. Then I put the then I put the 14 on and hammered it on the hammered it on to the nut. And as you can see where I hammered it on really good and where the where the bite bit where it bit onto all right I let those let those nuts I let those nuts soak with WD-40 overnight all right the next morning I come back to get these off wouldn't come off originally it stripped out on me when I tried to put the 15 on as you can see how bad shape it is it's almost when it's really rusted it gets hollow like that from corrosion okay like look at these other ones these ones are not as bad but they're still pretty bad okay so i put this bite on there and i put it on like this okay like that on the nut and i just hammered this end on uh on a socket what might happen for you is the bolt comes in through too far okay See, so that's not even letting it go. So I had to get one of these. Probably this one. And then I put another socket inside of here. Okay, like that. And I took this one and I dropped this in there so I would have enough room. All right, for the, for the bolt to come through. Okay, so that's how I found work for me for this case. So... I hope you guys do good on this this one okay this is this is a trophy right here this is going up on the wall all right success for that all right all right we decided to take this plenum off it's gonna be a lot easier to get this the top bolt on the transmission at the back all right we have everything unhooked it's pretty basic you have four injectors here you got to be careful because this one has probably not been removed in 15 years all right same thing with this side you have the uh, evap solenoid valve you have uh, the gas line make sure you get yourself some gas line tools like this all right get some of these fuel line separators okay all right get some of those and I took the alternator off for convenience. And once I get this off, I'll come back with the, another recording. Okay. All right. Here we are. We got everything out. Here's the tranny. All right. Hold up. Things are dirty. All right. So we got everything out. Okay, you can see it up there. 
Got all the space here now to transfer cases out. All right, so that lift that we got, it only goes up so high. So we had to take the tranny out while while the truck was still on the ground, all right? Because it only goes, it only elevates so high. If if we had it jacked up as far as we do now, we wouldn't be able to get the the uh, height on the lift that we got. Okay, this is the ATV lift. If you have one of those around, it says it's good for 1,500 pounds. So it should be good because the tranny itself is only <clears throat> maybe maybe 200 pounds, 250 pounds. Okay, so as you can see. We got it jacked up now. All right, always safety, safety number one. Okay, got some ramps under there. And the tranny's just about to come out. All right, bring it on out. Yeah, so here's how we're getting it out of here. Hold up, hold up. Okay, go. There we go. So, so, you can probably do this yourself, but having my son here is a big help. And there it is. Okay, there it is. Got the reading for the bad torque converter. <sighs> so we're gonna throw the new one in and see what happens. All right. Okay, here we go. While we're under here, while we got the transmission off, we're gonna change this rear main seal. We have an alignment tool for the rear main seal that we bought from Amazon. All right, I couldn't get it right away, so I had to get the PVC tight, but we're gonna try that and hopefully that's gonna work just fine. Okay, here we go. Getting ready to put the intake plenum back on. We took the intake plenum off so we could get at the top bolt and the transmission. All right, it made everything a lot easier. And it gave me a chance to clean everything up. Clean these intake ports out. Okay, this has got about 250,000, maybe 300,000 Ks on it or 300,000 uh, miles. All right. Got it all cleaned up. I'm gonna clean it up more. Just with some brake cleaner. All right, I got this intake off. And check out these ports. Look at that. Look how much dirt is on there. How much corrosion. That's still just where I left it. This one is the worst. Gotta change the PCV valve and the valve cover. It's It's been changed on this, but as soon as you see any symptoms of that, you should change it right away. Cause this is what you're Plenum will begin to look like. It's not good. I'm gonna clean everything up. All right. All right, here we go. We got the intake back on. got the tranny back in and I got the pan cleaned up and I got the new filter in and just about to torque down these bolts and then call it a night okay guys I have to get this in the video if you recognize these Okay, all right, these are the studs from the exhaust. 
Okay. If anybody knows what that is. All right. These exhaust studs, they go right here. Right on that flange. And they're on there really good. All right, so I couldn't get them all. I tried a smaller C-clamp like this. Okay. It wouldn't, wouldn't budge because it just, you know, I never had the power. All right. So I brought the big berth out. And that's what did it. Okay. For those of you, everybody who knows, this is what it is. It's a ball joint. Press. Okay. Now that's got the power. That's got the power to get those out. All right. If you can get a hold of a ball joint press, big C-clamp, it's a lot better because you can get a ratchet on the end of it. All right. That's what does it for me. Okay. All right, here we go. First test. It says zero DTC. All right. Most likely. All right, the. We got. We got a meter on our tranny. All right, it reads the computer, so. This, we're just pumping up the fuel system. All right, here we go. finished 290,000 miles on this vehicle all right I've been driving it now for three or four days shifts good I always like this this vehicle because because it cruises at right around a thousand RPM. Which for a 6.2 liter V8, not too bad on gas mileage. Not really bad. But yeah, here it is. It's back. Alright, so if you want to take on that job, uh, me, I'm just a shade tree mechanic. And one of the things I used for the transmission was a ATV lift. Uh, if you can get, get a hold of an ATV lift or a motorcycle lift, uh, that'll also work for the transmission. It is pretty heavy when, when you have it filled with fluid, but I changed it basically by myself so you're just a shade tree mechanic you should be able to do it all right <laughs> 